All right, section 7.7 .7 brings back one of our favorite topics, transformations of exponential functions. So we're going to talk about transforming functions. And what I'm going to talk about in this video is going to work the same way that all transformations have worked for all the other equations that we've done so far this year. Let's talk about the parent function of exponentials. The parent function of an exponential function is in the form y equals b to the x power. Now, what's very, very important to understand is b can be different numbers. It could be a half, it could be three, it could be two. It doesn't matter. But b can be different numbers. Now, the general form, or how you transform exponential functions. It has this form. I'm going to write it in red. y equals, and I'm going to do some color coding here. So I'm going to write the a value in black. And then we have b, and in parentheses, we're going to have x minus, which is always there. And I'm going to put the h in green. So if you want to do some color coding, please feel free. And at the very end, I'm going to put plus k. That is the general form of exponential functions. Now, why did I do color coding? Well, first of all, let's talk about the a value. I'm going to go way over here to the left of the board. a. a compresses or stretches the graph. Now, how do you know which is which? Well, if it stretches the graph, that means the absolute value of a is greater than 1. And if it compresses the graph, it means the absolute value of a is between 0 and 1. Now, also, the a value has another very, very important meaning. It, the a value is the y-intercept on the graph. However, there's a restriction. Only if the h value is equal to 0 and the k value is equal to 0. Make sure you write that down and highlight it. So a is the y-intercept only if h, this h is 0, and if this k is 0. All right, let's talk about h, the green letter. h, just like everything else, the, gr the h value, when it's in the parentheses next to the x, is the horizontal shift. It moves the graph left or right. If it's x minus h, the graph goes to the right. And if it's x plus h, the graph goes to the left. Okay? Just like everything else. Now, finally, let's talk about the k value. The k value is the vertical shift. It moves the graph up or down. Now, when does it do that? Well, if it's a plus k, just like all the others this year, the graph goes up. And if it's minus k, the graph goes down. However, k also has another very, very important piece of information for these graphs. The line y equals k, the horizontal line y equals k, is the horizontal asymptote. The asymptote being the line that the graph cannot cross. It is the horizontal asymptote, the line y equals k. And people, that is what these letters control on the graph. Make sure you understand that. A, H, and K. Now, let's do some examples. All right, if you need to pause the video, please do. But given F prime of X is equal to 1 half 3 times X minus, to the X minus 2 power plus 10. And remember this little prime symbol here. That little prime symbol means the transform function. So if that's the transform function, I want to know all these pieces of information. First of all, what is the parent function? Well, the parent function, if you recall, you get rid of, 
you get rid of the A value, the H value, and the K value. So if I get rid of A, if I get rid of H, and if I get rid of K, my parent function is Y equals 3 to the X power. Very simple. The Y-intercept. Well, the A value is the Y-intercept only if H and K are both 0. Well, that's not the case here. So the only way to find the Y-intercept is to put 0 in for X. Well, if I put 0 where the X is, I get 3 to the negative 2 power. 3 to the negative 2 power... 3 to the negative 2 power is 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 ninth. Well, then I take it times a half. So a half times 1 ninth is 1 over 18, plus 10 would make 10 and 1 18th is my y-intercept for this particular graph. All right, the equation of the asymptote. As I said in the prior slide, the k-value is the asymptote. Y equals 10 is our horizontal asymptote. The domain, what numbers can I put in for X? Well, in my equation, I can put in any number for X, and I will get an answer to the problem. So the domain will be all real numbers. Now the range, the range is controlled by the K value. The, the, this entire graph got moved up 10. That means all our y values have to be greater than 10. And finally, describe how this graph transforms the parent function. Well, what do the a, h, and k do? a is a half. That means it is less than 1. So therefore, the graph is compressed by a factor by a factor of a half. The 2 is h. That moves the graph right to. And the k value is a plus 10, which moves the graph, moves the graph up 10. And there you go. That's how the graph is transformed. Compressed by a factor of a half, Graph is moved to the right 2, and it's moved up 10. And that's how you answer the questions. Now, let's do some graphing. Again, if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do so. But what we're going to do is we are going to graph the parent function first. y equals 3 to the x, and then the transform function because it's got a k value. Well, you remember... Anytime you have to graph, if you don't know what to do, make a t-table. And we did this on a prior video. But if I pick values for x, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and I plug them in for x, if x is negative 2, I get 1 ninth. If x is negative 1, I get a third. If I put 0 in for x, 3 to the 0 is 1. If I put 1 in for x, you'd get 3. If I put 2 in for x, you'd get 9. Now, I'm going to try and graph this on this grid over here as best I can. Negative 2, 1 ninth. Oops, it's off a little bit, but it's, it's very close to the x-axis. Negative 1, 1 third is about right there. 0, 1 is going to be about right there. 1, 3 is about right there. And 2, 9 is going to be way up here. Now, as best I can on this smart board, the graph's got to look something like that. Not bad. And it's got a horizontal asymptote. There's a plus zero there. So it's got a horizontal asymptote. That dotted green, or that green line right there, the graph cannot cross that line. So the asymptote, the asymptote is the line y equals 0. All right. Well, let's transform that graph. Let's graph the one in red. So again, let's make a t-table. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And so if I plug negative 2 in for x, I get 1 ninth, but then the plus 2 makes it 2 and 1 ninth. If I plug negative 1 in for x, I get 1 third, plus 2 makes 2 and a third. 
If I plug 0 in for x, I get 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. If I plug 1 in for x, 3 to the first is 3 plus 2 is 5. And if I plug 2 in for x, 3 squared is 9 plus 2 makes 11. All right, so let's graph that. Negative 2 and 2 and a ninth is, well, about right there. Negative 1 and 2 and a third is about right there. 0, 3 is about right there. 1, 5 is about right there. And 2, 11 is off my chart roughly about right there. So if I draw my graph, my graph is going to look something like this, as best I can on this grid. What is the asymptote? Well, the asymptote is the line y equals k. k is 2. So I have the line y equals 2, which is now this dotted green line, which the red graph cannot cross. And if you notice, all my blue values, when I transformed it, they went up by 2, which moved the graph up to. And there you go, people. That is how you do transformations of exponential functions.